Not too long ago, I saw somebody post an image from the cover of this specific magazine talking crap about Nintendo, and none of that really mattered to me, but I got sucked in because of the cover story, so I had to scour the internet, find me a copy of this issue, and take a look at this. So that's what we're doing today. This is Next Generation Magazine. Issue is from May of 1997. That date's kind of important here. Volume 3, Issue 29, $7.99 in the US. I don't remember magazines being that much back then. Maybe they were, just don't remember. But the cover story that intrigued me was this. Something is wrong with Nintendo 64. There simply aren't enough quality games, but is there hope? May 1997, this was merely about six months after the Nintendo 64 came out and these guys were on them. Something's wrong here. I love the Nintendo 64. I had one the day it came out. I had a blast with it. I still love it to this day, but I definitely recognize the faults behind the system with the things Nintendo did, the lack of third-party support, all that stuff. But we got to go ahead and take a look at this specific article here. We're going to skim through the magazine. Uh, I haven't looked through this yet, but if there's any other articles that you think would be you know, good to do a part two, hey, drop a comment down below and we'll focus on something else. The one I thought was kind of interesting from just looking at it was this, video games are good for you. <laughs> Senator Lieberman's got it all wrong, claims MIT professor. Heck yeah, video games definitely good for me. What? And then this little like text box down here. As Sony drops the price of PlayStation games to $49, why can't they do that now? Come on now. The pressure on Nintendo 64 software library mounts. Has the game industry's 900 pound gorilla lost its muscle? Or can with the help of third parties, Mario and co triumph once again? Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is in the past. Kind of cool to go back and, you know, nostalgia type stuff. I really love this. I collect Nintendo powers, but, you know, hey, this is the first one I've ever bought of this magazine. So let's go ahead and uh, skim through this a bit, see what we got going on. Next generation, a little advertising themselves. Like I said, I'm not going to focus uh, too much on anything till we get to that specific article. Oh, nice. save your quarters for the laundromat. Die Hard Arcade, only on the Saturn. I, I, some of this, these ads are like, I just like, I kind of want to like cleanly cut this out and frame it. Dope ass ad right there. I mean, would that be kind of crazy? Oh, there's that video games are good for you article. We're not going to read through. That's a lot of stuff here. Video games provide an environment that kids can enter into to do many of the things they traditionally did in the backyard. He's 100% he's correct. I remember killing demons in my backyard, jumping on turtles and shit. That's, that's a very accurate statement right there. Hell yeah. <laughs> Aggression is a natural part of childhood, and yet we continually try to deny it. I don't remember. Was I aggressive as a kid? Or did playing video games like make me not aggressive? I, I, don't, I don't remember. The violence that really disturbs kids is the real violence, stuff that teachers and media reformers think would be good for kids. There's something to that statement there. Definitely something to that statement. Let's keep it moving. What the, f what the hell is this? I guess whoever's magazine this was, they had some uh, other stuff in here. Rolling Stone, Marilyn Manson, okay. He's been in the news lately. Not for the good, I guess. Okay, whatever. Bonus. I would have preferred there to be a $100 bill in here or something. Who is that? Oh. The, f the hell does that say? Great Chocobo, good ch carob nuts? I got some nuts for you. Southern. I can't read all that. Green. It's like, oh, they were like taking notes for like Final Fantasy VII or something, I think. <laughs> That's kind of cool still with a, you know, you never know what you find in these old magazines, dude. What the heck? What the hell is right there? Pull out or something. Subscription card. I don't know. PlayStation leads dropped to $149. You know, when the Nintendo 64 came out, I remember when the pre-orders were going up at certain places, people thought it was going to be $300 and then officially it was $250. So PlayStation around that time, they were at 200 bucks and they dropped their shit down to 150. That was like the beginning of, of craziness, man. Sony just like, you know what, screw Nintendo. We're destroying this, right? You know, the PlayStation 1 started it, obviously started it for Sony. It was the first one. I love their naming convention, one, 
two, three, four, five. Hells yes. They sold over 100 million units. During that time, Nintendo 64, respectable, mind you, only sold 33 million, uh, which was, you know, a lot lower than the PlayStation 1, lower than the NES and Super Nintendo, kind of started that trend for them, but it wasn't the worst selling Nintendo console of all time. Uh, that would probably be the Wii U. What were they around, 13 million? Wasn't until the Wii when Nintendo started to jump back up, over 100 million sold at that time, beating out the competition and whatnot. Uh, and then the Wii U dropped down, the Switch is a monster now. Uh, GameCube, right after Nintendo 64, actually sold less than Nintendo 64, sold 22 million. So it's been like a roller coaster. But PlayStation, man, all their consoles are in like the top like 10 best-selling consoles of all time. It's freaking nuts. PC sound finally breaks out. It's a freaking sound card. What the hell? <laughs> Let's keep it moving. Street Fighter 3 arrives. Which, which rendition? Street Fighter 3 Third Strike was dope. I love that freaking game. Final Fantasy Mania. Whenever I see Final Fantasy, I gotta stop. I gotta see what they say here. Sony's unwieldy attempts to control the hysteria surrounding Final Fantasy VII caused its dev uh, it a devilish conundrum. What? Especially on the sticky subject of censorship. Oh my God. Yeah, Sony with their censorship nowadays. What's going on here? The company publicly stated that it would have to take a decision on whether or not to cut a scene which takes place in a brothel includes salacious content. Oh no, we can't have salacious content in our games. Naturally, this provoked outrage of the kind only RPG fans can muster. You freaking nerds! <laughs> you know what? I bought a PlayStation 1 just for Final Fantasy VII. That was when I got it. I had a Sega Saturn prior to that. I love the PlayStation 1. Holy crap. All the awesome RPGs. It continued on the Super Nintendo. What the Nintendo 64 should have been. Freaking Nintendo. Oh, my God. Falcon Mach 5 PC. $5,495. That's got to be a beast. Pentium 200 megahertz CPU. 32 megabytes RAM. Damn. Redneck Rampage. Oh my God, back in the 90s, like especially the mid 90s, all these ads of these dumbass kids with that angle at their face where it's their heads all big and they're right up in your face, looking all edgy, wearing flannel jackets, same beaded ass necklace, pizza box on the floor. So damn edgy, so damn edgy. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, here we go, we finally got to it. Is Nintendo 64 breaking up? What? Oh my God, Nintendo promised quality, not quantity for Nintendo 64 uh, software, but the handful of mediocre games released so far honor only half of this deal. Oh my God, so can Nintendo 64's uh, 97 lineup get its 64-bit wonder console back on track? Wow, that is, that is harsh. Only six months, this issue was six months after the Nintendo 64, they didn't give it a chance. They were like, this shit sucks. When I got the Nintendo 64, yeah, I enjoyed Mario 64. And yes, I always grow impatient when there's no games coming out. This was this was the you know where Nintendo went for a while. You got quality first party, some great third party, but you didn't really go to their systems for that third party support, man. What else to say here? An early impressive uh, demonstration of what Nintendo 64 could deliver. Mario 64 now highlights the disparity in quality of AAA Miyamoto games and the rest of the Nintendo 64 lineup. But we're just going to skim through this article. Maybe just read the little blurbs for the most part. Um, wow. Did Nintendo ever really believe it could deliver on its promises? A promise of never before and seen levels of consistent software quality? Wave Race 64, an ambitious racing game from master designer Shigeru Miyamoto, is the only other undeniable AAA title to grace Nintendo 64. Was this magazine, I didn't, I didn't read this back in the day. Were they like anti-Nintendo? It's difficult to take seriously the claims that the Nintendo 64 lineup is based solely on quality when faced with such meaningless products as Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Killer Instinct Gold. Oh my God, I, I take offense to that. My sensitive brain takes offense to that. Not really, but you know what? Mortal Kombat Trilogy, I enjoyed it on the Nintendo 64. Killer Instinct Gold, a marvel of a game. But, I mean, if I'm going to be honest, would I rather play Killer Instinct Gold or would I rather play Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo? 
I would rather play Killer Instinct on the Super Nintendo. It just, I love Killer Instinct in the arcade. Super Nintendo version was excellent. I could never get into the uh, follow-up games, like even Gold. I just couldn't, couldn't get get a grasp on it, man. What? The man behind the only truly great Nintendo 64 title, Sugar Miyamoto, remains the only good reason to buy a Nintendo 64. These guys are harsh, man. Holy crap. Games such as Shadows of the Empire, Killer Instinct Gold, NBA Hangtime, and Doom 64 are little more than marketable BNC titles. Damn. Though Hiroshi Yamauchi would have you believe otherwise, 32-bit titles such as Resident Evil 2, Final Fantasy VII, Worldwide Soccer, and Fighters Megamix are far better than most Nintendo 64 titles. Oh, shit. What's wrong with Nintendo 64 software? Oh, they got a list here. Why do we have such a problem with the game so far? Here's our five main reasons. Out of date. Fast-moving industry by a perennial impatience for the next big thing. A game company cannot afford to be behind. The times. Sega learned this lesson the hard way with the Saturn. Uh, with dated titles such as Virtual Fighter, Clockwork Knight against PlayStation's flashier Battle Arena Toshinden and Warhawk. <laughs> Despite the Nintendo 64's positive launch... Uh, Next Gen Magazine heard from many Nintendo 64 gamers who are beginning to question the wisdom of their choice. Mortal Kombat Trilogy, Cruising USA, NBA Hangtime, Killer Instinct Gold are all yesterday's coin-ups, while most Western gamers graduated from Doom years ago. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. That is crazy. Nintendo found enormous success with cute and cuddly games such as Donkey Kong Country and Yoshi's Island, but how many gamers in 97 would have preferred the Mario game engine if it featured a bazooka-toting madman and blood dripping from the walls. Unfortunately, probably most of them. <laughs> Instead of Super Mario, you know, or Mario 64, I would have rather had Luigi run around freaking bazooka and bitches into the wall and having their brains splatter everywhere. That is a ridiculous statement. That is pretty damn funny. Nintendo has so far denied consumers the opportunity to play games in today's most popular genres. Since the decline of the Super Nintendo, the rival of the N64, more and more gamers have turned to RPGs, 3D fighting games, and sports sims. But you'd think that no one at Nintendo noticed. Burn, dude! Damn! You know, I love the Super Nintendo and all the RPGs on it. I love role-playing games, man. And the PlayStation 1... Definitely continued that for me with those feels. Nintendo 64, there was nothing, nothing too safe. Uh, cartridges, that's that's definitely a big one. All the companies, you know, were starting to go CD-ROMs, and that's one of the things a lot of companies were like, no, nah, we, ain't, we ain't bothering with these guys. It's just not affordable. Everybody's using CDs, cheaper. Reviving successful series in 64-bit seems to be Nintendo's answer to the call for innovation. These guys, man, they were harsh here. Pilotwings F Zero and Act was there. There wasn't an Act Razor on Nintendo sixty four. Nintendo sixty four gamers are left playing what essentially the same games they played on the Super Nintendo or even NES. That's not true. In, compa in comparing titles such as uh, Wipeout XL and Mario Kart sixty four, it's clear that sixty four bits does not constitute twice the power of thirty two bit systems such as PlayStation. Dang, dude, like, I love Mario Kart, freaking, you know, Mario Kart 64. Guys are nuts. The cartridge format of the 64 has already shown its limits in the redundant texture palettes of Shadows of the Empire and the maddening looping of music and crews in USA. No third-party support, that's true. I mean, very little. This is nuts, man. This article is crazy. While titles such as Sony's Jumping Flash 2 may not be blockbuster sellers, they possess an innovative quality sorely missing Nintendo 64 titles such as NBA Hangtime. Was NBA Hangtime a Nintendo 64 exclusive? I don't think so. Were they? What? Wow, dude. Then and now. So they're comparing like Super Nintendo games to Nintendo 64? Mario World for the Super Nintendo represented state-of-the-art 2D gaming but did not offer the incredible innovation of Mario 64. Okay, I love both of those games, man. Pilot Wings for the Super Nintendo presented gamers with a brand new gameplay dynamic where the 64-bit 64 64 version only supplies better graphics for the same formula. 
Interesting. ActRaiser, okay, this is where they mention ActRaiser. ActRaiser from Enix explored creative new gameplay avenues while Shadows of the Empire is a little more than a compilation of tried and true elements. Jeez, man. Then they talk about the 64DD. Yeah, this, this is nuts. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more here. The interview with Howard Lincoln might be interesting. Uh, Hiroshi, a lot of interviews, tons of information. This is a nice magazine right here. In development games, Blastcore was an awesome one. Um, wow, if there's anything else, I'll just skim through this real quick. Anything else you want me to do a follow-up video focusing in on? But yeah, that, that harsh criticism of Nintendo 64, it's pretty nuts. Spiders and Mega Mix love that game. Uh, let me know if you see anything in here you want me to focus on the follow-up. I don't know how this video is going to do. I don't care. I'm just interested. Bought this issue for a few bucks. Blood. And wanted to share it with you guys, so screw it. House of the Dead, yes. There's a lot of interesting things in here, man. A lot. Let's get, like, let's get down to it. Uh, job offerings, like, you know, Iguana Entertainment. You want to develop games. Wow, like back in the day, I remember this. Interplay, they would always have these advertisements. Come work for these guys. Even Squaresoft. They, they think they can find somebody who can work me over. Yeah, job, job opportunities. That's freaking nuts. That is nuts. Oh, my. But there you guys go. Really do appreciate you hanging out with me on this one. Albert Odyssey. Oh, my God. It's so awesome looking at some of this old school stuff here. Let me know what you think. And with that said... We'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. Look at that dude. Next month, talking about Shadows of the Empire. Appreciate it. Catch y'all on the next one. Peace out. Bye-bye and boom. Thumb butt.